hello and welcome to Friends and Neighbors. I'm, am I Sherry Tatum? You're Sherry Tatum, yes. I, I, yeah, I'm Sherry. <laughs> and I believe you're Sandra. Obama. I am, and we are your host today for Friends and Neighbors. And I know it's Sandra because she always looks so beautiful. Oh, See, you're so sweet. I really sweet. knew it was her. But <laughs> getting back to our show and our guests that we have today, have you ever been in a place where you feel like you couldn't go on? Mm. Like the loss, it's just more than you can bear. You're yes. in this grief. Uh, you're in heartache. And that's what we're going to talk about today because mm -hmm. so many people, just about everyone, Sandra, yes. experiences loss and grief. And mm -hmm. we've got Sydney Brinker Simmons here today who has gone through those yes. things. And she's written a book called Restored. And it's about helping people find joy again, yes, victory and again, mm -hmm. and we're gonna talk about her book and we hope that we can impart some good things to you, Cindy can, to help you if you're in that position today to move forward and have joy again. Right. So reconnecting Cindy. those broken yeah, pieces. Places. Yes. yes, yes. Cindy, thank you for being oh, here. <laughs> Sherry and Sandra, and I think you're both beautiful. Oh, oh, you, you are, are too. You, you radiate Jesus <laughs> for all to see, beautiful yes. ladies. Thank I'm you. honored to be well, here. Thank I'm you telling so you, much. this book is, is beautiful. Thank you. Just the Thank cover you. is is beautiful Thank and much you. less reconnecting life's broken pieces. So tell me a little bit why you wrote this yes, book. How it yes. came about your whole life. What have you been doing? Oh, <laughs> I've covered a lot of ground in a number of decades, <laughs> yes. actually, Sherry, exactly. But law started, yes, didn't it, yes. when you were 12? At 12 years old, I was sitting on a very uncomfortable pew chair, not like this lovely, <laughs> uh, comfortable sofa. And to my left was my 10-year-old sister, and to my right was my 38-year-old grieving dad. Mm -hmm. We had just buried my beautiful and talented mother. Wow. And I just, I was so heartbroken. I was so angry. I was so confused. And most of all, I thought, God, was angry at me. I thought I had done something so wrong, so unforgiving, so heinous that I was incurring the wrath of a vengeful God. I mean, that's where I part my 12 year old heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I wasn't too crazy about him either. Yeah. yeah. And so, and not only, not only Sherry and Sandra was my family mourning, but the world was mourning because even though mom was known as mom to me, she was known to her adoring public in the 1950s as the tennis champion Maureen Conley, also nicknamed Little Mo. Mm -hmm. She was number one in the world in tennis. In the world? In the world. In oh, the world. Tennis. In tennis, in women's tennis in 1952, 53 what and 54. What a legacy you have. I do. She won yeah. Wimbledon three years in a row, was the first woman to ever win wow. the Grand Slam, which is the, all four mm -hmm. majors in a, in, in a calendar year and still the only American. But Sandra and Sherry, even though she won every match her last year of competitive play, there was one opponent she couldn't beat, mm. ovarian cancer. Oh. And we were there weeping over this beautiful mom with the world. Mm. And so I thought to regain this love and affection, to earn back this love and affection of an angry God, yes. I had to perform. And not just to perform, perform well. So I began a performance track to earn back mm. the love yes. of, of this creator, God. And really to understand who she was, who he was, and, and really to understand where was mom? I mean, I knew there was a heaven and hell, but just to understand the whole process mm -hmm. of passing mm -hmm. and to really get to know God. Mm -hmm. And my dad was a wonderful dad. So I had a great father who I adored also, but, but it was like a vacuum cleaner had come out of the heavenlies and it just sucked all the joy in our, oh. our home. So that was on the track that I was to really earn back the love of an angry God. Well, how did you get back to it, Sandy? Well, God's outrageous grace oh, amen. drew me into <laughs> him, Sherry. And uh, at, when I was 16, a daughter of a pastor I met, and she shared with me that I could do nothing to earn my way into heaven, that God loved me as much as when my mom took her last breath, as when 
she hoisted that Wimbledon trophy over her head, mm -hmm. that yeah. God loved me with an unwavering love and outrageous grace. And the fact that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for me, to sacrifice for me, so that I could spend eternity in heaven, I couldn't fathom that, that, that God would sacrifice for me. So that's when I accepted Jesus mm -hmm. Christ as my Lord and Savior. Well, what, what kind of journey did, then did that set oh, you on? Oh, my goodness, Sherry. It was a <laughs> game changer for me. Because then I went to I, I graduated from high school, went to college, came back to Dallas where I live, started a, a career in public relations, and I was living large. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a great place to be <laughs> and with, with Jesus and where I was. And then in the room at a Bible study, walk this. <laughs> handsome man who captivated oh, my heart, Bob Simmons, <laughs> yeah. and oh my goodness, a, a man who loved Jesus, and we were married a number of years later, and we were just having a great life. We had a six-year-old boy, William, and we're about to adopt a little girl from Russia. Mm -hmm. So our life was planned, and we were ready to, to hit, it, hit it with, again, joy. And then life came crashing in with four terrifying words. Bob, you have cancer. Oh, no. And oh. three years later, we buried that precious mm. soul made of mine, my beloved Bob. But things were different this mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. because instead of feeling like God hated me, mm -hmm. I knew that God loved me. And even though I had a hole in my heart that had started with my mom's passing and had expanded with Bob's diagnosis, mm -hmm. I knew that that hole was filled with joy mm -hmm. because I knew the joy of the Lord. And when Bob had been diagnosed with cancer, we were given three months. And mm -hmm. he said, he called me beloved. I called him sweetie pie. He said, beloved, I don't know if I have three months, three years, or 30 years, but from this point forward, we're going to give God all the glory and we are going to show joy. We mm. are going to demonstrate joy. We are going to share joy with the world. And that's what we did. That was yes. our mission statement. Okay. And so it was a game changer because people were watching and lives were changed. My dad came to know Christ through this. That's all. Well, and you have children too. And at I that have stage. a little boy. So yes, he's watching you. Uh, respond, you and your husband yes. at that point. Yes. How incredible to be able to just walk that out with the yes, joy of Sandra. the Lord. Yes, but You know yes, what, Cindy, exactly. uh, we never know when a loved one mm -hmm. is going to die. It's so it's unexpected most mm -hmm. a lot of the time, but sometimes we know. But how did you function from the years of 12 to 16 during that time thinking God hated you how are you living? How are you functioning? And then when Bob died, how did you function? Because my husband passed away in November mm. last year. Oh. Sometimes I don't feel like I can function. I, I understand, mm. sister. Yeah, I, I, understand. I feel like I can. I do. I, yeah. I understand. It is hard to lose a loved one. Yes. I, I so understand that. And let me just say that suffering is a universal experience. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Bible says, 1 Peter 4.12 says, do not be surprised at the fiery trials you are experiencing as though something sudden that, were happening mm -hmm. to you. God predicts that we are going to have fiery ordeals our entire life, that none of us are going to be immune from the bumps and bruises right. of daily yeah. living. And, and, and Sherry, it doesn't have to be just a loss of a loved one. It can just be in today's world, yes. just looking at the news, just man's into oh, man, man yes. just discouragement. But to answer your question, I was on a performance track and I started playing tennis and I did well. That's I started how you got the, I I did. You kept I, busy in other words. I was performing. Yeah. And and I knew that God didn't just want a performer, but he wanted a winner mm -hmm. because he had shown me he didn't like losing. So I was on a performance mm -hmm. track mm -hmm. and that kept me going, but it's very unhealthy because I'd win a tennis tournament. I'd be so excited. But then if I lost a tennis match, my little world would implode. It, it is Performance is not what God no. wants. No. Yes. He loves us so unconditionally and so unwaveringly with no. his love. So, mm -hmm. so, no, you're absolutely right. So I was just going to say, so then when, when Bob passed, mm -hmm. I knew that God had a plan and a purpose for this. And I knew that there are treasures in trials. Mm. You know, trials, oh. as Sandra and Sherry, tres, they, uh, trials test the consistency of our faith. Right. And, and we know that 
that even though there are trials that God says are going to happen, there are treasures yeah. and trials too. Yeah. And we can see even through the hard times that God is with us always. Yes. My son gave me a beautiful definition of joy. He said, quote, joy is the cheerful confidence that God has the power to deliver. Wow. I love that. I Isn't that too. the truth? I love that. God delivers. Yes. It's the cheerful confidence that God has the power to deliver. And you know, Sharon and Sandra, even though we can't see God at work, he's always working for right. us, always working behind us, even if we can't see him for our good and for his glory. Yeah. And what it also means is that he is with us every step of the way. And as a believer, I knew that. Mm -hmm. yes. And even when I so felt faith. Yes, yes, faith yes. In God and, yes, and his word, God. because you're right. The Bible says, Jesus said, in this world, you'll have tribulation, but he's got that. Be of good cheer because yes. I have overcome yes. the world. So yes. we know it's yes. coming, yes. but we have to have that faith and that trust and that love yes. of him to get through it. And yes. I do, do you think we learn more in the valley oh, than we do, do on the mountaintop? Yes, as a great uh, G.K. Chesterton said, we see things small in the mountaintops, but we see things large mm. in the valleys. Mm -hmm. I do believe that. And let me just say, Sherry, with your recent loss, yeah. we do need to stop and, and just, just stop for a moment, catch our breath and rest when we've had a moment of grief. That is fair to do and to give ourselves the permission to grieve. Yes. That's important. We have to do that. But see, I, I'll start crying. Oh, I, yes. I, I will. I, 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 I understand. I'll, I'll start I crying. Understand. I, I want to get over that. I understand. And I do love the Lord and, and if it wasn't for him, I could yes. be here today. Absolutely. You know, I could be here. And you're a blessing to me because I know if God did it for you, yes, he'll do it. Yes, he will. For me. Yes, yes, yes he, he will. will. And let me say to you, dear sister in Christ, that we do have to rest and we do have to grieve. But God does not want us to stay in neutral. Yes. Life is beckoning because he is going to use your story. Look how he is using mm -hmm. you and Sandra for good. And he uses our stories. It is never too late. That's a big yes. uh, point in my book. It's never too late to be used by God, mm -hmm. even when our lives are messy, because we're all broken yeah. people. Yeah. And that's why I said in a tagline, restored, reconnecting life's broken pieces, pieces because sisters were all broken. And your book also mentions there's seven steps, right? Of how we can put these pieces together. And yes. I mean, these are fragile moments. And, and when loved ones pass, it comes via in waves. Yes, At any does. moment, you can yeah. just, it comes in waves. Absolutely. Um, so how, what are those steps? What can we yes. take? Yes. We've got about three minutes. three minutes. I don't know if you can cover all of them, but cover what well, you can, let, let me just say, dear one, and, and I'm going to be praying for you, Sherry, because Thank people you. undergirded me. One of the things, there's a story in community. It is so important that we have a community behind us when we are struggling to undergird us in prayer and to lift mm. us up uh, because God created a relationships. There's, it, relationships are his gift to us. So, so one of the things, there's restoring community. One of the things is restoring mm -hmm. momentum, how to put one foot in front of the others. And, and with these seven different chapters, yes. Sandra, I have applications on how to move forward in victory with applications. One is to restoring perseverance. God calls us to persevere. Fear. He calls us to be his warrior. Yeah. And he is a God of action. The other is restoring joy. And one of the things about restoring joy is grief, put your grief into action. Mm. And when it's the right, t right time, dear sister, think about ways of perhaps, as you do, volunteer and for your, your wonderful listeners, to volunteer for their favorite mm. charities, to give back, to, to put your grief to help other people, to yeah, be other focused, yes. not self focused, or find a hobby. Also, um, restoring relationships, and that's all about forgiveness. How do we forgive? Because forgiveness is the very nucleus around which the gospel gravitates, right. and it's so important to learn to forgive. Perhaps there's some people that in your life through, and, and Bob, before he passed, he talked to every single person he could think of, 
and made sure that there was nothing left unsaid mm. or nothing left mm. uncovered. And then restoring compassion. Oh my goodness, many times people, they want to reach out. They want to be a part of your healing, but they don't know how to. So in restoring compassion, I talk about how it's important to be present mm. and just to attend. You don't have to say anything. There's nothing that could resurrect your wonderful husband or my Bob from the grave, hey, but yeah. just to be there, to hold your hand. Just be present. And to be quiet and oh. just sit with you. And the final is to restore purpose. Mm. We are, can all be used mightily by God. Yes. And our stories are so important. And so I have applications on how to do that in each of the chapters. But, oh. You know, you do it, you do it with such uh, joy. Yes. Thank and you. your Thank smile you. is absolutely oh, captivating. And I, I honestly admire you. Thank you. Uh, and Thank you, I hope you're enjoying our show with Cindy. I hope you admire as much as I oh, do. That's so but we're going to have to take a break, Cindy. Uh, aren't yes, we? we have a small break to get to. <laughs> take a moment, yeah. take a breather, but yeah. come back and join us. We're going to continue our I'll conversation. I'll clean my face up while we're gone. <laughs> you're beautiful. We'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> Well, welcome back, and we're still with Cindy Brinker Simmons, and we're still talking about restored. Yes. God, we need to be restored mm. sometimes, y'all. So much. Sometimes you have to have help, don't we? Oh, we do. You know, the word restored, Sherry and Sandra, is based on, on the words repair, mm. renew, and, and uh, uh, repair, renew, and... Uh, Yes. yes, and, and re rescue. Yes. rescue, repair, renew, and rescue. And, and that's what God does. Mm -hmm. His goal is to rescue us, to restore us, to redeem us. And, and that's what he does in our heartbreak. And you know, I appreciate you, Sherry, because I have been where you are. There's a great book written by Sheldon Van Aken called A Severe Mercy. And in his book, he said, whenever you have deep love, you have deep love pain. Mm. And in my book, I talk about sharing our wounds, mm. being authentic, mm -hmm. because God doesn't want us to fake our, our pain. He yeah. doesn't want us to fake our misery because he has made misery and gladness cohabitate mm. with each other. Mm. I mean, agony and, so, and agony and joy lives together. Mm. And so that's, we live in a world full of sin, full of great joys, but great sorrows. Mm -hmm. And God wants us to be honest and authentic. And that's what trials also do. Trials help us have an intimate, authentic relationship mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. And so what I talk about and what I do is share my wounds. Yeah. I mean, be honest about my pain so I can help other people. And there are people watching this program today that might have just had a great loss. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they have a prodigal son, or perhaps, perhaps they've lost their best dog, their best pet. Yes. Or perhaps, as we were saying, they're just discouraged. Yes. They're, they're just, life is just not where they thought they'd be right now, and they are yes. at the end of themselves. Absolutely. That's real. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be honest, and we have to be authentic, and that's how God can yes. best use yes. us, yeah. being real. And I so appreciate you, Sherry, because yeah. my heart was broken as well. So thank you for well, being so honest. Well, they call me on here used to the weeper, and then they call <laughs> me know. the laugher. So, you know, I guess I one or the other, but I do, I, I, I don't mean to cry, but it's like, Cindy, it's like sometimes that emotion Absolutely. takes over yes. and you cannot help it, but you get through it. You do. You get you through do. it and, and God takes you on another step That's and right. another step because he said, I will never leave you Absolutely. nor forsake you. Exactly. Lo, I am with you That's right. always. So I take great comfort in the word of God. I take great comfort in, in the joy of knowing I have a savior. 
Yes. Yes. I have a Savior, and I have yes. a husband in heaven yes. who's waiting on me, and I will be with him again someday. You Praise will. God. Amen. And we Amen. need to be threats to the enemy. Yes. yes. We need to be threats to the enemy and say, death has no sting. And even though my heart is broken, you have no authority over me. That's right. You have no authority. That's right. Jesus is my husband. Right. When I was walking into the sanctuary to bury my husband now with my little nine, William was nine at the, at the time. As I was walking in, the Lord spoke to me and he said, today, Cindy, I'm your husband. Mm. And today I'm the father to the fatherless. And it was like, there was nobody there. And I looked up, <laughs> I said, God, it doesn't get any better than this. And I did not realize we were walking into a totally full standing room mm -hmm. only with thousand people there, sanctuary. Yeah. And at the reception, people were saying, who are you talking to, Cindy? What were you saying? <laughs> God was just reminding oh. me, Sherry and yes, Sandra, yes. that he is always with us. And you know, in all of my time since losing Bob, I have never felt lost mm -hmm. because God has provided. Again, he delivers. Yeah. Joy is the cheerful expectation and confidence that God has the power to deliver. That's right. And he always delivers. He is always with us. He walks with us. In Joshua 1, 9, he says, have I not commanded you? To be be strong, strong and courageous. Yes. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God walks and is with you always. Amen. And he is with you, Sherry and Sandra yeah. and me, because life is hard. Yes, it is. It is so hard. Yes, and the encouragement that mm. comes from the encourager is just unfathomable. Yes. And when you can walk into yes. the funeral home or the, the, the celebration of his life and, and, and hear what God has encouraged your heart. That is tremendous. That yeah. is absolutely tremendous. And I'm sure that comes from the word, right? It does. I mean, it you does. have to spend time on the word so then his um, light can just go in every crevice yes. that's yes. broken inside. Yes, of yes. Yeah. That's the cover of the book is that, that yeah. the I idea that we're all broken chalices yes. and yet God comes through those broken pieces and his light shines because again, as a threat to the enemy, we want to radiate Jesus for all yeah. to see. Even when we're breaking inside and you know, people watch, we are walking witnesses when our life is in the desert. I think so when we're singing from the mountaintops, but when we are walking in the valley of the shadow of the death or in that dark desert experience, when they see calm, yes. when people see peace and joy, mm. They are walking, we are walking witnesses and they see They're that watching. Jesus is real to us. A lot of people us. watch they that do. during that they time do. to see. Oh, you say you're a Christian. They you do. Know, yeah, they want to watch you, the unbeliever, not your Christian brothers right. and sisters, but the unbeliever. And when you, you can stand strong and you can say, no, I take comfort it's in knowing real. My, my husband yeah. is with my Savior yes. and I'll be with him someday. Yes. But, you know, I had a, a, a Max Cleland used to be our Secretary of State, and he wrote a book called Healed at the Broken Places. Don't you think we get stronger at the broken places? I do, and then, Sherry. like, yes. you can help other people yes. get that strength. You've helped me today. Thank you get you. that strength. You, you, you get over the brokenness, and you can be whole. Yes, mm -hmm. with a community. Exactly. Yes. With a community of people. And again, God does not want us to be lonely or to walk isolated because that's when the enemy speaks mm -hmm. harshness and speaks yeah. invalidation and speaks words of demoralization yes. into us. And you're not despondency. worthy of my love and despondency. Yeah. But when we are lifted up with a community as mm -hmm. you and I and mm -hmm. Sandra are, just the three of us yeah. right now, yeah. that we are lifted up as a community, we encourage one another. And that's what a community does because again, God is the gift of relationships. Yes. Well, yes. I want to thank you for being here, Cindy, but I want you to tell people where they can get your book. Yes, yes, thank you. Well, if, if people want to go, we have a, Restored has a website. Okay. It's BrinkerSimmons.com, and it just further introduces the, the followers with, with uh, this is the website, with the message of Restored and has um, testimonials and, and pieces and, and little excerpts from the book. People can follow me on in, in social media on CindyBrinkerSimmons.author. And just as an aside, 
I wrote this book because I wanted just to give my first fruits to God. And so um, this book, all the net proceeds from Restored, uh, uh, the book, uh, the book goes to charity, okay. and one is to a pediatric cancer organization because of my work with children with cancer, because cancer has assaulted my family on so many occasions, and the other to the Maureen Conley Brinker Tennis Foundation, which is named yeah. after mom, and we do a lot with tennis. That's okay, awesome. thank you, my dear. Thank, thank you, you. Thank so you. Much I love for you so us. much. <laughs> thank you. We got to oh take gosh. a break, but thank you for being with us. I appreciate you, and I hope we can stay in touch somehow. Yes. To God be Thank the glory. You. We're going to just take a break. We're going to come back. Yes. We're doing good. <laughs> Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors, and I pray that you have been touched in a special way. The Holy Spirit is yeah. so ever-present. Mm -hmm. He's the only one that can orchestrate conversations to give God glory and honor and to be able to encourage our hearts. Know that we are here for you, to encourage you, but God also uses His people around this couch to mightily encourage others as yes. well. And you know, only remember this, only God can heal a yeah. Yes. heart. Only God can get you to take that next step. Mm -hmm. Only God can bring the joy back in into your life, no matter the, what the circumstance. Surround He's yourself. He's more than able, That's the Bible right. says, to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. And I can ask and think a lot, y'all. That's right. <laughs> so God remember God's you, promises. But also surround yourself with a community yeah. of believers. They will be there for you as well. And thank you, Cindy, again. My yes. honor. Amen. We'll Amen. see you next time.